in our gas. Tush go, chok go. Kupe, bitch, bitch, lach me. Josh, nie me, nie. Joking. 
Only a dishonor. Yin Tong would serve aboard that ship, and you would know you are one. You may be my daughter, but even you cannot speak to me like that. I only suffer being your daughter by blood. But to me, you are nothing. Your brother Baraka is a better father than you. My brother Baraka? I have no brother. I was Baraka when that other Romulan Fatak took my place. Uncle Baraka is a hero of the Alliance who single-handedly fought off the Gorn attack on Coos Bay. And I tell you, I was Baraka. Have you forgotten all this? You only prove how weak you truly are by trying to take credit of a real hero of the Alliance. I should kill you for that! I cannot believe that you would act this way towards me. Take that back, or I will... Commander! Let me out! But you heard her! Yes, but look around! There's something not quite right here. <laughs> what in the name of Kalis are you speaking of? You speak of Kalis as if he was an honored warrior. Is he not? You should know that Molor defeated Kalis after he tried to kill Morath, thus putting an end to the weak words of Kalis. Next you will be telling me that your father Karg was some great warrior as well. As a matter of fact, Karg destroyed the triple breeding infestation on Space Station K-7 that threatened the Alliance. <laughs> now, I must inform the General that you are awake. <laughs> what is going on here, Admiral? My own daughter speaks as if I committed some sort of treason. She thinks Baraka is actually my brother. Does it look like there's been some destruction going on? We were on our way to Bajor. And the last I remember, they were a peaceful member of the Federation. Correct. High Command wanted us to negotiate for that new strain of grain the Bajorans had created. <laughs> Not a mission worthy of warriors haggling over the rights of grain. They should have sent a Ferengi! High Command preferred to send a ship that had the most skills in those situations. So why send us? That ship was not available. <laughs> <laughs> so what happened? We had taken the shuttle to head down to the planet. Suddenly we were bombarded by some strange fluctuations, which shorted out the control panel. I remember trying to hail a stranglehold as our systems were failing. There was a, a strange disturbance in Romulan space, affecting the time-space continuum as if a planet was exploding. Destroying a well-known planet and drastically altering the timeline to replace it with a new one? Sounds like a plot to reboot a movie franchise. <laughs> that does sound far-fetched. You! What planet is this? Goodbye! No, no, this is Bajor. You lie. Bajor is a peaceful planet and has been for years. Does this look like a peaceful planet, Klingon? No, looks more like a stage. <laughs> and just who are your attackers? Do you not read the communiques, or are you suffering from some sort of trauma? If I were you, I would answer the question. Just to humor me. Forces from the Alpha Quadrant have formed an alliance and are forcing a stronghold on Bajor. I think I understand, Commander. We have gone through the looking glass. Excuse me? Like the Federation, we have slipped through an alternate universe. Even if that is possible, how are we supposed to act in this universe? Just listen to what they say and act like you are the person they think you are. I am a warrior, not an actor! <laughs> you should have expected the stranglehold to stumble into a war zone! What brings you here? I just happen to be in the area. You must be lost. I have no need for a scientist, especially one with delusions or grandeur. Who thinks he's an admiral? 
I need warriors who are able to fight! With you in command, I can understand that need. <laughs> oh, gosh, babe! Before I have you shot, I again ask, why are you here? You would not understand if I told you. It appears they had little choice. Their shuttle failed and they crashed here. You must have been studying flowers again and not paying attention. No, I am cutting down on flowers. Too fattening. <laughs> well, since you are here, perhaps you can be of some use. These Bajorans have found an artifact. And since you are a scientist, you can tell me what it is. We believe that this relic is from the Celestial Temple of the Prophets. Well, scientist, do you know what it is? You'll have to give me a moment. Take some skill to do this science stuff. Be quick about it. What are you doing? Stalling for time. We're not in our own universe. But we are not scientists! You know it is not true. I know it is not true. What do we care what they think? General! The Terrans are demanding an audience with you. General! <laughs> I am Commander Giselle of the ISS Rogues Galley, here to negotiate your surrender. My staff, First Officer Scarlet, Chief of Security Anna Ensign Kendra, and... And I am Vic Dem. I am the chief negotiator for the Terran Empire. I am here to negotiate your surrender. What have you to say? This is my answer. Not let. <laughs> <laughs> what is not let? I don't know. I believe the general has said nuts. You're telling me nuts? Are you mad? Our forces vastly outnumber yours, so your choice is surrender or die. We're Klingons. We prefer impossible odds. It makes for better stories. I think the Klingon is making fun of us. If you knew him like I do. No, you're right. He's making fun of you. Klingon, I would watch my mouth if I were you. Why? Does it do tricks? <laughs> As I see it, you all have only one option. That you surrender and accept becoming slaves in service to the Terran Empire. You already have my answer. Yes, but it is the wrong answer. I strongly suggest you rethink this. I appreciate someone in your position. It must be difficult being the monkey on the end of the grinder's chain doing whatever she tells you to do. <laughs> <laughs> you take that back. No. <laughs> yes. No. You're nothing but the son of a smooth head. You take that back. Not until you take back what you said. This is childish. You first. No, you. No, you. I'll have you know, I am an expert in the field of negotiation. So, you first. Nebia! You are fighting like children! No, no one not. He, he started, started it. it. No, you started it. This verbal exchange serves no purpose except to take up time or lengthen what is possibly a short script. <laughs> you obviously have never seen the Bajoran Senate when they are in session. This is ridiculous! Send me someone to- <laughs> Those of you that die will be the lucky ones. 
I have heard if you shake your fist at them, it will show them you mean it.
they would expect us to do that. But General, the enemy is out there. Then we will bring them over here. Their families too, if we have to. Must I think of everything? I object to this plan, as it will cause significant loss of life and splatter blood everywhere. Then I suggest passing out plastic sheets as a form of cover to the splash zone. <laughs> there is no time. There has to be another plan. General, I have a cutting plan. You? You would not know a cunning plan if it was painted a big red target and was yelling, cunning plans are here again. <laughs> General, I think we should trust him on this one. Why should we trust what he has to say? This is a war, not a science project. Because I suspect his plan will not be what the others expect. Good job. <laughs> Nothing can hurt me. <laughs> 
What is wrong with him? <laughs> it is the worst form of torture you can give a writer. A rejection letter from his publicist. <laughs> It seems they found his memoirs to be severely lacking credibility. Allow me to escort you to a cell where I can interrogate you in comfort. You don't fright me. I'm certain the Empire will come to my rescue. The name of victim does not mean sacrifice. Gentlemen, will the scapegoat be covered in barbecue sauce and tossed into the tar pit? No. I have something better in mind. Not the same sitting duck in the flames of breath bar with the orange sauce on the side treatment. <laughs> no, even better. I would not want to be in your boots, Taryn. Sounds like the general has reserved her special torture for you. Oh, sweet shot, there is not enough Cool Whip Lego and Guppy Bellows. I'm a doctor, not a... Oh, there is no word for what you are planning. I am 
him, but you must hurry, as the technology on board your shuttle will want to return him to your universe. But he is dead! He is mostly dead. Yeah. <laughs> I do not believe that the nanoprobes in his body will let him totally die. You must hurry. Do not worry. The prophets will see you home safely. This does not work. I will personally come back and kill you! Do you think they'll be able to return to their own universe? Only time, fate, and a demand for more adventures that this crew will tell. So what happens now? Thank <laughs> you.